No. Are you, are you okay? <sighs> Sorry I'm late, you guys. I was, I was busy making myself pretty before I hosted TechLink. Okay, you know you look good. You probably can't tell though. So you know how we recently reported on how miners were already finding workarounds for the RTX 3060 hash rate limiter? Well, it looks like another one has been uncovered and it is ludicrously simple. An HDMI dummy plug that costs six bucks. Although miners were already aware that there's a beta driver floating around that enables Ethereum mining on one graphics card, this dummy plug actually allows a multi-GPU setup. You see, part of how the limiter works is by requiring a monitor to be connected to each graphics card. But these cheap little dummies can fool the card into thinking there's a monitor connected. It's unhackable. In fact, I have one right here. There, that's the one. They're also useful for virtualization, so that's why we've got a bunch of them lying around. One user was able to mine Ethereum at a total of 192 mega hashes per second on a four-way 3060 setup, so it shouldn't take him too long to make back the $24 he spent on those four little plugs. You know how Apple has been selling iPhone 12s without a charger, ostensibly to reduce e-waste? Well, one state in Brazil is not buying it, as the state of Sao Paulo has nailed Apple with a fine of nearly two million US dollars. That's right, US dollars. The state's Consumer Protection Agency was concerned that Apple's environmentally friendly explanation was just a cover to screw over consumers, and was also upset about Apple's claims about the iPhone's water resistance. Now, two million bucks is chump change to a company like Apple, but the bigger deal here is that they might end up being forced to include chargers when selling iPhones in Brazil, which <clears throat> is a huge market. Samsung actually ended up having to do this with their phones. So maybe Brazil's fight against Apple will go a little better than that time they had to play Germany. Hey, got him. If you're into mechanical keyboards, there's a good chance that cherry switches lie underneath your keycaps, but so far only on desktops. Well, with one exception, but we won't talk about that. It looks like that whole thing is about to change though, as Cherry has released information on its upcoming ultra low profile switches for laptops, also known as Ulps switches. Wait, no, not that. As you might expect, the switches are tactile and give acoustic feedback, so they'll probably appeal to fans of Cherry MX Blues, and importantly, they'll support RGB backlighting. As far as when you'll be able to get your hands on some, it looks like Alienware will be one of the first companies to feature the new switches. Though you will have to dig pretty deep into your pockets for the uh, money to, to get one, because the cheapest laptop they offer with the Cherry Switches starts at $1,800. And then guess what? You get to pay another $150 for the Switches themselves. But is any price too much for tactile satisfaction? You might as well just buy a magic keyboard. Yeah, our slash mechanical keyboards would say no. And an iPad. And you know who else would say no? Oh. Um, uh, it's no, bad segue. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Dollar Shave Club, the easy and affordable way to look, smell, and feel your best. They've got all your grooming needs covered. Skin care, oral care, deodorant, and of course, shaving, because it's, it's in the name. It's, I mean, to prove it, Dollar Shave Club sent over their ultimate shave starter set, which includes a sleek matte black razor handle and either the four blade all-terrain or six blade extra close blades, as well as a one ounce tube of Dr. Carver's prep scrub, shave butter, and post shave dew. Wow. Visit dollarshaveclub.com slash techlink to get the ultimate shave starter set for only $5 with razor refills shipping at regular price after that. Now for the Quake bots. What? You remember how Microsoft promised Dolby Vision HDR support for the Xbox Series X and S? Well, guess what? It looks like it's finally starting to arrive for a few games such as Gears 5 and Borderlands 3, and only for Xbox insiders, but it should be released to the general public before the end of the year. Hopefully we'll see more titles supporting it soon, as I can't wait to play TechLink Simulator 2021 in glorious HDR. On, on PlayStation 5. Oh. Just kidding. Acer has reportedly been hit with a major ransomware attack with a group of criminals demanding 50 million US dollars. As for how Acer got hacked in the first place, it looks like a security flaw in Microsoft Exchange left their network exposed. Acer has so far been tight-lipped on the situation, so let's just hope that predator monitor you've been eyeballing won't suddenly shoot up in price. Hopefully they don't release the 
source code. And if you're in the market for an iMac, you should know that your buying options are continuing to shrink. Apple has already said, no more iMac Pros. That's exactly how they said it. And now there are no more 21 and a half inch models with a 512 gigabyte or one terabyte SSD. That leaves your storage options for 21 and a half inch iMacs quite limited indeed. The move comes ahead of the transition to M1 processors, but it would be nice if people who need an iMac now could, you know, actually store things in it instead of in a NAS where everyone should be storing their data instead of on their computer's internal drive. It's been well publicized that Microsoft's latest Windows updates have given users major problems when trying to print, including blue screens and graphical glitches. Microsoft has since released a fix, but now users are reporting problems getting it through Windows Update. The good news is that you can download and install the patch manually, but hey, feel free to continue being dumbfounded at how printers still always seem to find a way to mess with us. Just, just, just no, die already! And CD Projekt Red has given us details on what its upcoming 1.2 patch for Cyberpunk 2077 will address. Does anyone care anymore? Uh, one big fix will be how police behave. They should no longer be instantly appearing out of thin air right behind you. Just like in real life. And uh, other reported fixes involve being able to unstick cars that get stuck on obstacles and having more flexibility when it comes to assigning keys. Hopefully when it comes out, this patch won't cause more problems again. And that's our show. Come back on Wednesday for another episode that we hopefully won't have to issue a correction for. Did we do that? Never had to do that. I don't think, well, right maybe we should have sometimes. I don't think so. Remember when we said no one's buying iPhones and it turns out that one was like the best selling one ever? I haven't seen an iPhone since.